Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in into my channel. This is RC Chaser. I wanted to make this video because I wanted to share with you my journey into my first build ever 1 6th scale Armortech Sherman tank. And this is the M4A3 or EC8. And I'm hoping that those of you who are beginners like me or about to start one, that this can be uh, helpful for you. And if you're an expert, please feel free to provide for some insight below in the comments. And so this is uh, part one from delivery to the testing of the tracks. And hopefully I'll have the part two in a few weeks. Okay, this is uh, the Sherman. We're gonna check now with Jimmy. Jimmy here. I think they're missing a box. What's in here? Oh look, look at that, what's that? Open it up. Sherman, look, authenticity, what, which number? See, this is an M4 identifier. Okay, cool. Is this when it was produced, 2021? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a number 15, okay, 15. That's a date, that's it, yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah, European, they do it that way. Metal pieces. Oh, that's the, the bottom deck, right? The bottom yeah, deck. for it, right there. Uh -huh. Well, just leave it in there. Cause yeah, I'm not ready though. Let's see. So, can you open that yeah, one and I see what's this one? Let's see what's num serial number. Look, see that all the manuals on there. That's what it looks like. Wait, I'm sorry, can't help you anymore. Oh, it's I okay. just, I'm just exhausted. From I mean, God builds it so perfectly that one thing screws out the other. More parts of the wheel, right? That's what it looks like. Right? Oh, this is gonna be nice. You have fun. When are we doing this? I don't know, man. We're gonna go empty this thing and we have to lay the parts up. Hi, guys. Thank you for tuning into my channel. This is RC Chaser, where everyone is an RC Chaser. I wanted to uh, do this video to share with you my experience of building my first 1 6th scale Armortech Sherman tank. M4 A3 76 millimeter with the uh, horizontal bullet suspension system, which was introduced in the late 1944 and was put in production in 1945. They also called this system EC8. Anyway, the kit when they arrived in June, it's a wonderful kit. It's uh, well built, very precise, and there are significant number of parts. There are over 4,000 parts in this kit. Uh, that's including a significant number of nuts and bolts and of course parts from all the tracks. And there's a lot of preparation that needs to be done here as you would already probably know. Uh, you need to clean it with the aluminum cleaner. Most of these parts are metal. They're mostly aluminum, CNC and there are very precise fitting and because of the CNC you have to clean out some of the holes here to fit everything right but most of the time it's uh, they go on fairly easy it's just time consuming procedure you know um, doing some painting sanding and then painting again and the road wheels are excellent and they have a lots of details and the tires are very strong. I have to glue them with glue them with the um, my RC car tire glue, but you have to work with it fairly quickly, or they dry up where you ever you set the <clears throat> tires at. But anyway, the you can see the the suspension. This is a new suspension that was 
produced in late 1944, at least in a full scale, and it was built by the Chrysler, and it's very strong, and uh, it was uh, fun to put this one together. Probably the most tedious part of building tanks is putting the tracks together. I believe I had over 160 tracks I had to put together and had to tap over 640 holes. And you're gonna go through taps fairly quickly. So I would suggest get three more because they give you only one. And when you do that, you start putting it together. So that took a little while. I guess some people uh, do this while listening music or <laughs> watching TV while doing this. After a while, you can do it blindly without looking at the tracks. The next system is the lower hall, which is fairly easy. I painted the interior white. This is what the color of the uh, full scale Sherman is white. And you have to start planning where you're going to put the battery and batteries and the smoke system. And I started to put some weld seams also and putting the rest of the parts in the rear. And finally, my motion pack, recoil, sound, and smoke system has arrived from the United Kingdom. And you can see it, it is well packed. They do a good job with that. And it comes with, with a beautiful manual. It's fairly easy to follow. That's one thing about Armor Tech. Uh, very uh, well designed and thought well thought of because they've been doing it for a while so they probably solved some of the uh, earlier issues but uh, you can see there's a five inch speakers here there are two of them they sound fine but uh, I opted to use my old Bose system that was sitting around and it had um, deeper sound so I'm gonna go with Bose you'll see it later as you can see all the wiring systems here well packed and the you know, bubble wrapped and it's just a beautiful system so i was glad to see the motors were in the box because i wanted to test my tracks system and to see make sure it works and you can see the motor the motors are built well and it's fairly large it looks like this motors that you would use in a wheelchair all the electronics are there, uh, the modules, and also the recoil motor was there also. As you can see, the motor is uh, fairly uh, large, and this is what it looks like when installed. And don't forget the um, spacer. I forgot that you can see there's no spacer now. I had to go back and install it. So after I installed the motors, I've decided to put the batteries in the center using the aluminum brackets that I got from the Home Depot and they're bolted from the bottom so they're flushed. And I also added the uh, smoke system in here so I know how much space I'll need for my speakers. These are lead acid free batteries. These are Duracell batteries with 20 amp hours each. They are configured in series. So you have about one hour running time. Just make sure that you, you have ample uh, line to reach to the bow of the tank so you can charge it and monitor the batteries. So I replaced the stock speakers, which is, it looks like well, it could be five inch speakers with my uh, three inch speakers from Bose, which I had sitting around for 20, you know, 20 years. These are old lifestyle speakers. And this is what it sounds like. Enemy 
started. So at this point I started to put some weld seams around my tank. Since this is my first tank and and uh, been experimenting on how to make these welds, some of you probably do it very well. And uh, so any suggestions, please feel free to put it in, your, in the comment section. Thank you. So the next install was the electronic system, the power module, the controller module, the audio module, a turret elevation module, so you can see. And the power modules, more, all your things are going to connect to that to power it. And you'll see that in the digital screen, they're reading out the percentage of your battery life. And I choose to put it in the front here so I can see it through the uh, copula to the opening in the bow so I can see the status of it and, and also have access to the switches and to adjust the volume. I had it sitting on top of, of acrylic glass about a quarter inch thick. It's very strong and sitting on the an inch of wood block that I glued in the tank there. So you can see that the battery is 96% charge and you have access to, to that power module. And also you can see on the right side of the tank is the power switch and also my charge port as well. I'm following the scheme of Battling Beach 2. I believe this tank came from the 7th Armored Division, 31st Tank Battalion from France of August 1944. And I thought it would be interesting instead of doing a Fury. So at this point, this is the time where I test my track. This is the first time that I had the tank running on the ground anyway and I'm testing it for the right tension you can see it's a little bit loose it's almost binding right there in the front the right one is also loose the other things that you need to configure is your radio mixing because there you only I have it in two channels but you're moving in four channel direction backwards forward left and right so that took a little while it, it took a while to really adjust the tension here in this current state but I'm testing my lights and my smoke system so the smoke system is working you'll see later on the video and now I'm testing it and it's all full weight I'm about 80% done with my tanks and there's still a few more stuff I do more details but you'll note it's powerful enough to move out of wet grass so my right track here is still a little bit loose and I think I end up removing one of the tracks on the right side. I'm testing the turrets, the guns, and the elevation. There's a recoil. The uh, recoil is a little bit of a challenge too there. And it's getting there. This is not weathered yet and I don't have all the shovels and picks on top of the tank and other knickknacks that I'll put on later.